Hi guys, it's Amy, and you have found Amy Loves Crochet. Thank you so much for your time. I do sincerely appreciate any time you click on my videos. I've got a couple of finished projects today from this yarn that I used called Royal Batik from Zeman. It is 100% acrylic, and I received this yarn in a Mary Maxim mystery bag a couple years ago. So um, I've used it on a few things. I had also this yarn in a blue and white and pink combination, um, but this combination is just in blues. So this is a pattern that I found in my stitch book, my stitch guide book, and um, I really liked the way that the colors just roamed and roamed and roamed. I had three full skeins and then a partial. So um, I made a wrap out of it. So it's a nice little, you know, wrap your shoulders up. It could be a, a wide scarf if you want it to, depending on where you live and how much cold protection you need. <laughs> it could really be, um, it's, it is considered a four. It's a little bit light if you ask me, but um, it is in the four range. So you can see this great pattern that, that uh, I worked. It is upside down. It is, you've got some double crochets here and then some chains. And then we come over to a big shell and then you do some clusters, double crochet clusters here, and then you do a V stitch in it. And so got some chains going in between and then the rows of the double, three double crochets there together. So I really enjoyed the um, pattern. It was easy to work up and you really kind of know where you're at when you're working it. So it's not a pattern where you need to constantly refer back to the pattern. You know, once you kind of, once you've got it going, you, you understand where you're at. So only certain things will work in certain places. So I really enjoyed this one and um, I hope to get a tutorial put together for you. So when I was done working uh, the blanket up, or the wrap, um, I decided to go ahead and try to make it into a hat pattern. Um, the way that the pattern runs, you just keep going with it. So what I decided was to go ahead and make it into a hat pattern and just kind of change up my count, if you will, uh, to include the pattern, you know, uh, because it tells you how to work with an edge, you know, and when you have to do the math to figure out how to do it in the round. Sometimes that'll get you going. Well, let me get my hair clips out because I don't want them to clip on that. All right. So it's a nice little pattern. Gives you nice, you know, airy spaces. Sometimes a hat is too heavy and you really need some more space in there for your head to breathe a little bit. Um, so yeah, I thought this was a nice way to change up the pattern a little bit and put it into a hat. Uh, so then this one, I changed a little bit more. So this one's got, um, I stuck with a, f a fewer number here. Uh, the count is to be three and then there's an edge stitch. So that's where I went with this one. But then I thought, well, maybe that's too many holes. So I changed up my stitch count to include more double crochets through here. And I kind of like it a little bit better. You know, maybe you don't want that right in the front. Maybe you want one of the whoop, one of the you know solid spots like right in front of your head, and then you put the designs on the side, or not. You know, it's up to you. So I like you know me. If you if you know me, <laughs> you know that I like to take a blanket pattern or you know one that's where you're just learned the stitch itself and kind of rework it to make it into a round, to make it to fit into a hat. So yeah, that was a really nice yarn, you know, working through some of the, the cubby, some of the yarns that I have and clearing out a cubby for some other spacing. You know, like when I bought my recent eBay box, there's my, my blanket pad, my blanket kit up there in a, in a spot. So um, yeah, so I really enjoy you know, it's fun to get the new yarn, but to clear out a space to put that yarn in means that I've got to work with something that I've got, that I've maybe had for a little while. So I like to work through, you know, I've been looking at that yarn for quite some time and yay, I'm glad to have worked it up. So that was just a little quickie for today. Um, 
just, you know, life is getting in the way. I'm on vacation next week, so I hope to get some time to do a tutorial or two. You know, life is just going so fast. So here again is a look at the pattern worked up in a variegated yarn, or if you were gonna do color changing after each row or something to that effect, it could look something like this. But if you were gonna work the, col the pattern in a single color, this is what that will look like. So it does give you a very different look. And this is from my book, uh, The Crochet Stitch Guide of 86 Stitches. There's, a, there's multiple stitch guide books out there, so just look for the one with 86 stitches and you'll find this V-Stitch pa uh, Peaks project. So let's just go ahead and jump into the tutorial. So this project works with a multiple of 14. So if you want to just chain out 14, 14, 14 until you get to the length that you would like for your project, then we're going to add another five chains. One, two, three, four, and five. So row number one starts with a double crochet in the fourth chain from the hook. One, two, three, four. We're going to put in a double crochet. And then we need a double crochet in the next stitch as well. So now we should have three double crochets. All right, then we're gonna chain three and skip five stitches. So one, two, three, four, five. Into that sixth stitch, we're gonna do a V stitch. So that's a double crochet. And then we're gonna chain two and do a double crochet in that same spot. Oops, my yarn split. There we go. So you should look something like this. Got your three double crochets, chain three, skip five, and a V-stitch. Double crochet, chain two, double crochet. And that's our repeat for row one. So chain three, one, two, three. We're gonna skip five down here, and you can see this is the chain that that V-stitch went into. So we're gonna skip this first one, two, three, four, five. So into this one, we're going to start our three, uh, our double crochet in the next three stitches. So here is one double crochet, two, and three. Then we will chain three, and we will skip five, two, three, four, five, and we'll do a V, which is a double crochet chain two, double crochet in the same spot, and there's our repeat. Who knows what comes next? We've got chain three, skip five, and then start our three double crochets in a row. Chain three, skip five down here. In that sixth one, we're gonna do a V stitch, which is a double crochet. Chain two, double crochet in the same stitch. Chain three, skip five, one, two, three, four, five. And that's where we should have three left to do our three double crochets in a row. Oops. This is your repeat. You're doing three chains on the top and skipping five chains on the bottom in between your groups of three double crochets and your V stitch. That's chain, that's row one. Okay, row two. Go ahead and turn your work and do the pattern calls for a chain three to work your next row up. If you know me, you know I prefer a chain two. You can do a standing double crochet, you can do a mock double crochet, whatever it is you like to do here. But I'm just going to chain a tall two, and that's going to count for my first double crochet of those three. So go ahead and do another double crochet on top of each of the next two double crochets. 
you're going to repeat that edge piece all the way up. You're going to have three double crochets like this on the edge all the way up your pattern, all the way up your project. So for the row two is going to continue by doing a chain two and then we're going to jump over to the V stitch and we're going to do a shell here and that's going to be seven double crochets. So one, oops, two, three, sometimes you got to scooch those over a little bit. It's going to get crowded in here. There's four, five, six, and seven. I like to double check. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven double crochets in your V stitch. So then you will chain two and we're going to do a double crochet on top of each of those three double crochets. And then we're going to chain two and we're going to do another shell inside that V stitch. So that's seven double crochets. One, two, Four. We like a good party. Scooch those guys over so everybody can fit. Six. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. All right. And then we're going to chain two. And we're going to do a double crochet on each one of those three double crochets. And I'm going to finish this pattern with. Just I finished this row, chain two. We're going to do seven double crochets to make a shell inside that V stitch, inside your chain space of your V stitch. There's four. And V stitches are fun, aren't they? It, you know, depending on the pattern, they could be uh, two chains in the middle of them, it could be uh, one double crochet on each side, it could be two double crochets on each side. One, two, three, four, five, six. Whoops, I need one more, seven. That did not look like enough. <laughs> okay, and then we're going to have a chain two. And when you get to the end of your row, you're going to have a double crochet in each one of those three double crochets from the previous row. And just remember that's going to be on each side of the blanket or the pattern, whatever it is that you're making. You're going to have three double crochets on each side. And that is this row, row two. You've got your shells of seven spaced out with two chains before your three double crochets on top of three double crochets. Row three, you're going to begin the same way. We need three double crochets here on the edge. So whatever method you use to grow up your next row, I'm going to chain two and then I'm going to do one double crochet in each of the double crochets so that I've got three for my edge. All right. And then we're going to chain two. And now we're going to work into this first double crochet right here. So we're going to do a cluster stitch. And to do that, you're going to yarn over, go into your stitch, and pull up a loop, or pull up your yarn. Yarn over and go through two. And we're going to leave the rest of that double crochet unworked. And then we're going to do that item again, that, that work again. Yarn over, go into the loop, uh, the stitch, pull up your yarn and then yarn over and pull through two. So now you should have three loops on your hook. Draw over, or draw a yarn over and pull through all three. So that's one cluster. We're going to do that in the next stitch as well. Yarn over, go into that stitch, start a double crochet, but don't finish it, and then do it one more time. Yarn over, pull through only two. You've got three loops on your hook, yarn over and pull through all of that. So you just made a second cluster. We're going to do that one more time in the next stitch. Start a double crochet but don't finish it. Start a second double crochet and you'll not finish that one. You'll have three loops on your hook. Yarn over and pull through all three. So those are three clusters you made in the first three double crochets. We're going to chain one and we're going to skip that next 
double crochet and then we'll have three more to do a cluster in as well. So yarn over, start your double crochet, don't finish it, start another double crochet, pull through only two, and then pull through all three loops on your hook. That's a cluster finished. We're going to do that again two more times for this shell. Yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through just two. You've got all three on your hoop, on your loop, on your hook, <laughs> and then yarn over and pull through all of that. So this is your what your cluster row looks like. You've got three clusters in the first three double crochets, one each, and then you're chaining one and skipping a double crochet, and then the last three of this seven, we've got a cluster in each of those three. So then you're going to yarn, uh, chain one and you're going to do a double crochet in each one of those three. Just the same as we have been, that part doesn't change on each of the rows. We always come back to that three double crochets in a row. All right, we're going to chain just once and then we're going to start our clusters again in that first double crochet. So yarn over, go through like you're beginning a double crochet and then stop and then do that again and you'll have three loops on your hook, yarn over and pull through all three. So go ahead and continue to work this row, a cluster in each of those first three. Alright, you've got those three clusters. We're going to chain one and skip the next double crochet and work our next cluster into that one, this one here. It was really easy to tell on this pattern when you were not in the right stitch because it's very so very specific. If anything, you would just sort of need to remind yourself how many chains in between each of the items on the row. So for example, down on the first row we chained three. On this one we're only chaining two. On this one we're only chaining one. And then a double crochet in each of the three double crochets from the previous row. One more time for me. I don't know how wide your project is, but I'm going to chain one. And I'm going to work these clusters into the first double crochet. Start a double crochet, but don't finish it. You do that twice, and then yarn over and pull through all three. Here's cluster number two. cluster number three. And if you chain one and you skip one and then you don't have three left, you know you made a mistake on that shell. So we chain one, we're skipping this one and working into the last three on the shell. Whoops lost that loop. Let's try again. There's three loops. Last one to pull through all three. Here's my last cluster for this shell. When you're done with that, you need one more chain or one chain between your clusters and your double crochets and we'll just end the row with one double crochet in each of the three double crochets for your edge. And then, you know me, I just dig right down into it. If you try to pick up the two loops as you should, it sometimes turns that stitch sideways a little bit, and I want it to look as flat and non-gap as possible. <laughs> All right, so there's the end of row three. Okay, so round four, we're going to turn the work continue our pattern of the three double crochets along the edge. So whatever growing up method you're using, continue to use that. And give yourself two more double crochets for that edge piece. And now we are going to chain three. 
and we're going to jump over to this chain one space that we made between the clusters and we're going to put our v-stitch in so again our v-stitch is a double crochet chain two and a double crochet okay and then we're going to do a chain three and work our three double crochets onto the three double crochets. That part hasn't changed. Two, three, grab some yarn. Okay. So you've got your chain three and we're going to, I mean your three double crochets. So now we're going to chain three again and jump across to that chain one space where we are going to insert a V stitch. So double crochet, chain two, double crochet in the same spot, create your V stitch. We are, whoop, we are going to chain three, one, two, three, and do our double crochets on top of our our three double crochets on top of our three double crochets. Two and three. We've got a chain, whoops, we've got a chain three. Jump over and put your V-stitch in place. Double crochet, chain two, double crochet, chain three. And now we're at our, I'm at the end of my row for my last, my double crochets here on the end. So I've got three double crochets to put in there. And again, if you turn your uh, double crochet to grab, I mean your chain to grab those two loops as you normally would, it sort of pulls it out there a little bit. So I like to just reach down and stab right into it right there. And then I can create my double crochet without scooting that stitch over at all. Alrighty, folks, that is the end of the repeat. Um, you'll come back to the rows two through four to repeat your pattern for this project. The V stitch starts it out, and then you do your shell of seven, and then you do three clusters with a chain one, skip one in the center and then your three clusters and then you start your v-stitch again so from here you're going to go ahead and jump into row five which is a repeat of row two so we'll grow our side up do our double crochets here and then before your shell we're going to do a chain two and put seven double crochets inside your V. Three, four, five, six, and seven. Get those guys to scooch over a little bit. We're gonna, oops, we're gonna chain two. Do our one double crochet on top of each double crochet. And we're gonna chain two and get those seven double crochets in the center of your V-stitch. Two. Oh, doggy nightmare, hold on. Poor guy was having a little bit of a nightmare. He was standing there running and chasing something I think I don't know <laughs> okay one two three four five six oops and seven double crochets for my shell we're gonna chain two one double crochet on top of the three we're gonna chain two and another seven for me this is the last of my repeats got three 
four, five, six, let's go over, and seven. Chain two, and I've got my final three double crochets for the edge. One, two, and three. All right, Let's see how that's working up. There's my shell again. So now we've got a cluster row to do. The clusters, so this is a repeat of row three. And so we grow up our side, get our extra two, our next two double crochets in there for the edge. And then this one we are going to chain two and do a cluster in each one of these double crochets. So do like you're starting a double crochet and stop and you do that twice. So we'll pull over through all three loops on your yarn on your hook we're going to do that another two times for this part of the shell two clusters in each one of those double crochets and then we're going to have a chain one and a skip one and remember that's where our v went on the next row so if we don't do that then we're missing a spot missing our space to put that v stitch in so we've got three more clusters down this other side of the shell. Ta-da! See our three clusters, chain one, space one, three clusters. And then we're going to chain two, and we are going to do a double crochet in each of those double crochet spots. And chain two and then clusters again and the first three there's one there's two and there's three chain one skip one don't forget that and then we've got three more clusters down the other side of the chain of the shell one two and three. Now we're going to chain two and double crochet one in each of those three. Oops. Chain two. Come on, Amy. And then this is our last shell for my repeats. You can really make this project into any kind of blanket or blouse or, you know, any type of thing like that. If you'd like a market bag that's got some holes in it, this is a good one for that as well. Chain one, skip one. Do our last three clusters. Oops. final cluster for this shell. And then chain two and double crochet on top of each double crochet. One, two, and three. All right, and then we're back to our V-stitch row. So grow up your next. This is the repeat of row four. Whoops, I did three there, I only want two. And a double crochet in each of the next two. And then we're gonna chain three and jump over to this space here to put in your V-stitch. Double crochet, two chains, double crochet in the same spot makes up the V-stitch for this project. Chain three, do your three double crochets on top of the three double crochets. Two, 
chain three, V stitch in the center. One, two, double crochet, chain two, double crochet makes up your V. Chain three, double crochet on top of each of the double crochets. Chain three, my last V stitch. Chain two, double crochet, and then chain three, and get to your last three double crochets of the row. And three. And that is the end of my tutorial for you guys. Just continue to repeat rows two, three, and four for the length of your pattern, however long you want your pattern to be, or however tall you want your pattern to be. You can use any type of yarn with a corresponding hook size. You can use color variations. You can use solid colors for this sort of a look. So enjoy that, you know, change up the pattern a little bit to work in the round, which is what I did for the hat. Um, I just added my three double crochets here to each other in the round and work out your math for your hat size. That was a lot of fun. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. Let me know if you choose to make any projects out of this stitch. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Alrighty guys, that's the video I've got for you today. I hope you enjoyed your time with me. Have a wonderfully blessed day and please do come back and see me again. Thank you. Bye-bye.